Hello and welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. Thanks so much for being with us today. I am Mary Alale Yusuf. Everybody has two tonsils at the back of the throat. Those are the lymph nodes that are the defense mechanism of the body, part of the defense mechanism of the body, keeping infections at bay. It's common for tonsils themselves to get infected by germs, sometimes getting inflamed. This is called tonsillitis, and tonsillitis can occur at any age. Our guest on Health Matters today is Dr. Olufemi Olude. Dr. Olude is a consultant, ear, nose, and throat surgeon with more than 25 years specialist experience. He's currently at the General Hospital in Lagos Island. He's also a member of several associations in Nigeria and abroad. You're welcome to the show, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. So what are the germs that cause tonsillitis? Uh, there are a lot of germs that cause tonsillitis. Uh, we have what we call the streptococcus, the one uh, the, the pneumonia that causes pneumonia. So many, the one that comes from the sinuses, the one can... Are those all bacteria? Majority of them are bacteria. Also, we see some, some that are viral in, in origin also. Okay, so um, what... I know that the tonsils, it's been said that they are a defense mechanism. They keep germs at the okay. germs that you're taking at the mouth. But are there any other functions? Do they have any balancing effects on the body or stuff like that? No, they have balancing effect on the body because they are part of the defense mechanism. Right? There is a ring we call Wadea rings. It's part of the system. We have the external one that con that that serve at the lymph nodes that inform us that. There's an infection about to take place. And the one also in the throat, in the nasopharynx, and also in, in, the, in the pharynx also. They are part of the, I mean, the lymphos, lymphos system that fights against infection that comes through the, air, through the nose and through the so mouth. So this is just one of the gate men, if you, if you will. Well, it's a gate man of the throat. Of the throat. I mean, it's the police of the throat. Now, when there's tonsillitis, that means these lymph nodes have been infected. No, the lymph nodes are already... No, the lymph nodes is just there. It's a, it's just, it's a sign for us. It's a part of the lymphoid system, but when they get enlarged, enlarged. or tender. But that's why when you see somebody with a tonsillitis, if you touch... The lymph nodes, we call this jugular, the gastric lymph nodes. They are enlarged or tender. Are there any other symptoms? Or there, are also the, there are a lot of symptoms. What we have is, uh, in medical time, we call it odinodysphagia. That's why painful swallowing of food. Okay. Which can, it can be so disastrous. At times, patients won't be able to drink. I mean, you need to take water. And then apart from that, there is fever. Then apart from that, also there is a pain that radiates into the air, and this one serves. It, uh, it gives us a, an impression that if the pain radiates to the air, the patient will come to the air, nose, and throat. Because uh, when we have the sore throat, the pain radiates to the neighboring organ, and if it radiates to the to the uvula. That's why you see some of our people. Okay, going, the going uvula, to, that's the, the little one hanging the, right in the in, middle. In the middle. Because it's, it's near the tonsils. So the pains radiate to the neighboring, it can radiate to the when air. When you say radiate, radiate, does it mean that it's like a referred pain? It's it, not really paining the person, but it just referred, feels like. It's a referred pain. It refers to the air and to the uvula. Okay. And so we put that when it comes to the uvula, they take to go and meet our people, the Hausa people that do the traditional belu belu. What's that? It's just to remove the uvula. They do that? And there's a lot. Isn't that dangerous? What about bleeding? There's a lot, especially when we have this, uh, when we have the Hausa community, there are a lot of people who do it. And there's some part of the cultural and in that image in, in the north that they always. Cut 
the uvula the, the, the off, uvula off as part of their culture as part of their culture but have you have you had any tragedies by by reason I've, of this behavior I've, I've had a tragedy this one was a a young man that have a sore throat i went to meet the local outside uh, they cut the the ovula and then he was given some some medication liquid medication and unfortunately it turns to tetanus wow so the child, the you know the man when he was taking the medication he went into a prison and he swallowed the spoon so when he came to our emergency in the general hospital they called me that there's a patient that swallowed a spoon and by the time when doing the investigation we saw that he was doing the when you're having the the, the treatments of the when he was when he was going in, into fit when he was in tetanus because of the tetanus uh, tetanus the, the, the lady that was giving was afraid he removed her hand then he and swallowed he just took the spoon. spoon in and it was a difficult case but to handle to, to handle now um why do i get the feeling that tonsillitis is a child's disease it's like it's only children that are always having that problem well when we when we look at the statistics, it's mainly children, but there is still a lot of adults that have continued having recurrent episode. They always treat it, and it always recur. Okay. And usually we have we have a simple or that an episode recurrent episode of tonsillitis more than three times in the year is an indication for removal of the tonsils. Of the tonsils. And also in children, also we have this uh, adenoid, enlarged adenoid that also corresponds with the inflamed tonsils. So does the does the infection from the tonsils sometimes go to the adenoids? No, where everything... because it's pretty far, the tonsils and the adenoids. You know, there's some distance. So everything starts when when we look at in a child. That has an enlarged adenoid. The child is not breathing through the nose. The space at the back of the nose is narrow, so the child is breathing through the mouth. Okay. And the air that goes through the nose gets filtered, gets warmer before going to the respiratory tract. But the one through the mouth is the dirty air That's right. that enters. And the first place it encounters is the tonsils, because as I said the tonsils is the police system. Then the tonsils fight back. So um, that is the time that when we see these children, they always have this cold cough and catar. And there's no way you treat them. They go back to the environment again. They, and they get it all they, over they again. They get it all over again. Do these uh, infections, because they are so common, do they subside by themselves? Well, it, everything depends on the immunity, immunity of the child and how the child is being kept. So that's one of the things that I actually tell mothers that your child, a little child can never tell you, say, mommy, I'm feeling cold. So you cannot compare your skin with your, with your child's skin. So you have to keep your child warm. Okay. And try to prevent this cold. And anytime you have the cold cough and kata, you treat. But if it's just your calling, we always have a time limit for them. We observe them. Okay. Even right. Okay, so are you saying that a child might come to you with tonsillitis and you say, it's not so bad, go home. Let's well, see what it looks like tomorrow or in two days. When, when they first come for the first time, you have to treat them. You have to know the cause. But majority of the children is always associated with enlarged adenoid. So we call it obstructive adenotonsillitis. Okay. So we give them some medication. We start cons conservative treatment. And we give them an appointment. And when, they, 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 when we follow them up, and then also it depends on their age. Because if there is a child, we have, we have, we have children, we will arrive from three months old, a month old that are being referred to us. We try to manage them. A month old with tonsillitis. No, with a large adenoid. With a large adenoid. That can lead to infected uh, tonsils. Okay. So we, 
we monitor them maybe up to two and a half years old before we can do the surgery to remove the adenoid, to remove the to remove the tonsils. But in cases there are some cases that are so bad that we cannot wait. Because during this period, the child is not sleeping well. Every time there is this stridor. When the child, you know, it's normal, so if your child is not sleeping well, the mother cannot sleep, the father cannot sleep, the old ass cannot sleep. And we know that snoring, if your child is snoring, and the child early in the morning cannot go to school, he will still be snoring in class. So it, and you know that children, they, they, they learn in the morning in schools. It affects the school, school education and everything. So that if the child cannot wait for so and it's so bad that we cannot wait. Because it's affecting it's his affecting. life now and the life of what those around we him. Can just do, we can just go and do the first stage of the, of the surgery to remove part of the adenoid a little bit and give the child breathing space, bre breathing literally. Space. And then we wait for maybe the child is four years old or five years old. Because if you go through that side, there's, there's, one, there's a ring in the throat that is not, not well developed. And by the time if you remove the adenoid at that age, there will be a time that after the surgery, you can just see your child drinking water. Water will be coming through the nose. Okay. So, and then no parent is going to take it low with any doctor. That. So that's why we always inform them that this is, this is the period we have something. And that's why the first time they come to our clinic, we always explain everything about them. So it's looking now like the, in, an infection of the adenoids is inexorably linked to an infection of the tonsils. Because the two of them, they are part of the lymphoid system. Okay. The it's lymphoid system, we have in, in the, what the adenoid, we call it, adenoid, it's pretty part of the lymphoid system, is the upper part of the, of the tonsils in the nasopharynx. All oh, right. Okay. Then we have say, another one at the opening of the eustachian tube, a tube that connects the nose to the, the ear. To the ear. Then we have another one in the in the throat, the pala palatine one, the bigger one. Then we still have another one at the back of the tongue. Then we have another one in the lower part of the of the pharynx. And they are all the same system. They are the same system. It, it's a form of a ring. Now, parent. what is the indication for a parent to bring the child to the hospital? And you know and not just do tepid sponging in the house and... Uh, the indication is that the current cold, cough, and kata. At times we call the children, see never dry. Okay. Because they are, every time you treat them, within a month, their cold, cough, and kata is back. And that time, we call this operatory tract infection. And for us, the doctors, you have to maintain that respiratory so that it doesn't, it doesn't spread to the lungs to cause bronchopneumonia because okay. when, it causes, when it causes pneumonia, it leads to hospital admission and it will just, the child will stay longer. I mean, to me to do the surgery, it will, be, it will not be possible at that moment. So, and other indication is that usually the child is at night, is not sleeping well. Okay, on that note, we'll take a short break. Please stay with us. We are coming back after the break. 